This is the introductory video for the Canimals experiment. So our apparatus in this experiment are these little cans that we're going to fill up with warm water and then we're going to use them as a model for a small animal. So can, animal, canimals, har har. Now this experiment is done in a manner that's quite different than other experiments. It's going to be done as a class exercise. You and your partner will study one or two of these canimals and determine the cooling rate of the canimal. Then we're going to combine everyone's data and you'll answer some questions based on the entire class's data set rather than just your own data. So as I said, every group's going to have one or two canimals to study. Some canimals differ only in size. So we've got four different sizes and there's a set of questions that you'll answer based only on the changes you see based on size. There's another set of canimals that are all the same size, but they will have different conditions, such as some of them are naked canimals, some of them have a layer of fat, and some of them have a layer of fur, which is a little bit of wool sock. In addition, these canimals that are the same size are going to have different environmental effects. So some of them will have, for example, a fan blowing on them as you do the experiment. Some of them will have wet fur, some of them will have dry fur. And in the case of the cannibal that has a layer of fat, it's actually going to be submerged in some room temperature water while you do the experiment. So this is not so much fat as a layer of blubber for a marine cannibal. Another way in which this experiment is different from others is that there is no uncertainty calculations. You don't need to do any uncertainty calculations this week. I do want you to record uncertainties on your raw data, but then you don't need to do anything with those uncertainties. You won't need to calculate final uncertainties on your values. Also, for your conclusion, what I'm going to have you do, because there's no uncertainties and thus no way to compare values scientifically, what I'll have you do for your conclusion is just answer the set of questions that is in the back of the experimental write-up in the lab manual. So there's a big set of questions and you'll just answer those and that will be your conclusion. Likewise, I'd like you to do your theory section in your report a little different than normal. In the lab manual, there is quite a long theory section. What I'd like you to do is to read through all of this and there's different sections. So insulation, conduction, convection, evaporation, radiant heat loss. Write down a couple of sentences explaining each of these. So just summarize it in your own words and then also put in the very few equations that we're going to be using. Define the variables as usual and explain how they'll be used. So just to summarize that again, your theory section is just going to be a summary of the theory that's in the lab manual. Your conclusion is going to be answering the questions in the lab manual and you don't need to do any uncertainty calculations for this cannibal's experiment. Although I do want you to put uncertainties on your raw data when you record it in your book. Now you are going to be filling up this cannibal with water, but before you do that, there's three things you want to measure. You want to measure its height and its diameter, and you want to weigh it empty. So get those three things. The reason why we want those is when we actually do the experiment, we're going to have this cannibal sitting on an insulating pad and have another one on top of it. Because we do that, we're going to assume that the surface area of the cannibal is just this outside ring. So it's basically a rectangle wrapped in a circle. So we need the height and the circumference of it. So by measuring the diameter, you can get the circumference and you'll also then multiply that by the height of the cannibal to get the total surface area on this outside rim. So length, diameter, and also its mass while it's empty. If your cannibal is supposed to have fur on the outside or fat on the inside, you weigh it without those on. So just bare, no fat, no fur, and no water in it yet. Now in the front corner of the room, over by the sink, there's this strange contraption. This is the reservoir that is going to give us the warm water that we fill up our cannibals with. So inside your cannibal, there's a little black line. And there's a variety of containers near this thing that allow you to fill up your cannibals, and you should fill it to that black line. Now, if the outside of your cannibal is not supposed to be wet, take pains to make sure that this is dry. So dry it off if you want to. And another thing is that once you've got it filled up, you want to take it back to your desk so that you can put it on that insulated pad and get stirring it as quickly as possible. And that's just so that you don't miss the window of temperature where you need to take data. So once you've got it filled up, get it back to your desk relatively quickly. By the way, if your cannibal needs wet fur, go ahead and take the fur and dip it in here, squeeze it out to get it slightly damp, and then take it back to your desk and put it on the cannibal. 
You will need to weigh your cannibal with the water in it, but you can do that after you've completed the experiment. Now once you've filled up your can to the fill line with warm water, you bring it back to your desk, you put it on the insulating pad, stick the other insulating pad on top of it, your thermometer goes into the middle hole, and then this super high-tech stirring device gets inserted right beside it, and you should start gently stirring, even if you're not quite ready to take data. The reason why is we want the water inside the can to all be at the same temperature, and if you don't stir, then the outside will be cooler than the water in the center. So start stirring gently, so you don't add much energy, but do that constantly throughout the data taking and even before the data taking. The way in which you take data is you'll be stirring this and you'll be watching the temperature. And you're going to take data through a very specific temperature range. You must catch the interval between 39 degrees Celsius and 37 degrees Celsius. So you'll bring your water back, it'll be about 42 degrees Celsius, you stir, and you watch this temperature. And when it gets to 39 degrees Celsius, start timing, and keep stirring. For most groups, you're going to then take data every one minute. So every one minute, you'll record the time and the temperature, and you keep doing that until you get down to 37 degrees Celsius. Some animals cool a lot faster than others, however, particularly the very small ones, the ones that are wet or have a fan blowing on them, and the ones that are sitting in a bath of room temperature water. Those ones all cool very, very quickly. For them, you may find that you need to take data every 30 seconds or maybe even every 15 seconds. So if you find that your can is cooled too quickly, that you don't have, say, at least six data points, then fill up again with warm water, try again, and just take data more often. So every 30 seconds or every 15 seconds if necessary. But like I said, most groups taking data every one minute is fine. If you're not paying attention and you miss your temperature interval, so it's already gotten down past 39 degrees Celsius, that does mean that you'll have to fill up with warm water again and start over. Now once you've gotten all your data and you're done with the cannibal, you need to take this apart, take this off, and then go and weigh the cannibal full of water. So you go and weigh it with the water in it now. If your cannibal had fur, you take that off. And if you're one of the groups that had a cannibal with fat in it, so this one, the fat kind of floats, then you need to actually take two masses with the water in it. So take the fat out, weigh your cannibal without the fat and just the water that's in it. And then you need to do something extra. You need to fill up with water to the fill line because it wasn't that full before because the fat was taking up some space. You fill up to the fill line and you weigh it a second time. And then in your calculations, you're going to be using a ratio of those two masses. So if you're the group that has to do this, go ahead and ask your lab instructor to clarify things for you. So once you've got your data, you're going to graph it. One thing to be careful of is to convert your units from minutes into seconds. So you do want the slope of this to be in degrees Celsius per second, not per minute. I also would prefer you to put in your uncertainties, but that's all you're going to be doing with them. You won't actually need the uncertainty on your slope value at all. The point of making your graph is that you want to get the cooling rate at body temperature, and that's just your slope value. The graph, just so you know, probably won't be totally linear because the cooling curve is actually a curved graph, but over this very small temperature range that we have, 39 degrees Celsius to 37 degrees Celsius, it will be roughly linear. So that's why we fit a straight line to it. So your slope value is the quantity that you need, your cooling rate at body temperature. So this is one of the quantities that you're going to put up on the overhead for everybody in the class to use. The other quantities you're going to need are going to be the height of your cannibal, the diameter of your cannibal, its mass without water, and its mass with water. So those four things plus this slope value, which is your cooling rate at body temperature. Now once everybody's got their data, we're going to put it up on the overhead, and you'll fill it into a table. There's an example in your lab manual of what your table might look like. And then you'll answer questions three and four based on everybody's data, not just your own, but the whole class set. Now question three and question four are the questions that I want you to write up as your conclusion. So instead of writing up a normal conclusion analysis like you usually do in the labs, you're just going to answer these questions. One thing to be aware of is question three, there's all different parts to it. These questions are only regarding the four cannibals that were of different sizes. So just these guys that were all naked cannibals but different sizes. So all of these questions that you answer in question three have to do just with those ones. Question four has to do with all the cannibals that were the same size but under different conditions. So naked cannibals, furry cannibals, wind, uh, dry fur, wet fur, sitting in water, 
all of those ones that had the same size but different conditions, those are the ones you look at to answer question four and all the different parts of question four. And I'll warn you that a lot of marks come from answering questions three and four, so do think carefully about the theory section and what your results mean and explain things well, because that tends to be the area where people lose most of their marks if they're going to lose marks.